All right, good morning, guys. We're out here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. We're going to be targeting sheep's head today, dropping down some live shrimp on some rigs, trying a couple different things. Should have a pretty good day planned for y'all, but we're not going to waste any time. See y'all out there. All right, guys. Uh, hang on. Make sure I'm recording. We'll talk about our setup here in a second. We're just going to get try and find some fish first, and then we'll discuss it. I thought I felt a bite on bottom. Oh wow, well, something did eat it. Okay. Wow. Something tore that thing up. This is the kind of stuff y'all need to look out for when you're going 90 to nothing in your boat. It's a huge piece of wood right here. I can't really do anything about it. Because that is ginormous and would sink my kayak. But, uh, you hit that with a boat prop or your boat, you're not going to have a good day. Not a good day at all. Oh, yeah. All right, guys, y'all are going to hear me echo a lot. But we are underneath an industrial complex. And we're going to try and find some fish up under here. Got us out of the wind. Hey guys, we're gonna show y'all how we rig this up. So, this is our two odd octopus hook. You can see these little black mark and then there's a tiny one up here. What we're gonna do is take that hook and go right in between them underneath that horn. And what that does is keep them the most natural. Two split shot weights on 17 pound mono. Really already? <laughs> Redfish. <laughs> Just boat flip them. He's small enough you can boat flip them. I'm sitting here talking about rigging up shrimp and here you are going, I got one already. <laughs> there you go. That one. Oh, there we go. Another redfish. What else? Good lord, chill, chill, chill. There we go, guys. Tiny little redfish, but it's something. Sorry about that. Uh, been kind of rough. Until now, he's keeper. <laughs> he's keeper. Heck yeah. Get in here. Yeah. Look at that boy. That's a good sheep's head. Good eating size. All righty. Had to upsize our wakes. The current's getting crazy. Might have to get that closer to the pylons. Here we go. Oh. They're hanging right out at these pylons right here. Yep. Come on. Ah, oh, redfish, that's why. What? Nah, he's too small. He's 17, I can tell. Nah, he's maybe 16. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight spots. Go back. There we go. Nah, he's too small. I was just kind of letting it drift for a second and just reeling in slack. Guys, let me just go back. Oh, good lord, he's been eating, he's fat. But there he goes. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, he 
Here's good size. Dad! No! He did exactly what I didn't want him to do. Went right around that freaking pile and said, snap! During the um, summer, it's good for a flounder. Oh, hello. Ace keeper, ace keeper. Back out, back out, back out. <laughs> I was like, that is not happening again. Oh. Come here. Come here. Around this side. Get him. There we go, there's keeper number two. Look at that, guys. That shrimp down his mouth. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, wow, what the crap is he pooping out? Good size keeper sheep. Good size. Come on, get him up. Back out, start backing out, start backing out. Don't you let him whoop you. That's a good sheep. Heck yes. Hang on, I'm coming. Here, scoot back up. Scoot back up. Don't let him go under my kayak. He'll get tangled all in my drive. Got him. There you go. There you go, son. Oh. Thank you. What's that, three? That's three now, yeah. Well, limit's 15 per person. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hey guys, I'm sorry I didn't do this on the water. I got kind of all sorts of distracted helping out my buddy get used to the kayak. But we are back at the house. We are gonna cook these sheep's head up for y'all. We're gonna show y'all how we clean them up and how we cook them. I'm gonna show y'all one of my favorite recipes for these sheep's head, so let's get to it. All right, guys. Oh. It only took us freaking forever to do this. We're taking and sharpening our knife real quick. This brand new knife sharpener my wife got me for Christmas. Alrighty. First cool thing about sheep's head, they kind of have this little zipper right here as you can see. You can take your knife and get right up on the scales and get up to your head. And then we can work down And we'll pull that meat up as much as we can to get up underneath it. And what you're going to start doing is filleting it off the meat. Alrighty. Go through that. You have to kind of angle down to get that part past the... Uh, that. Here's the part that turns everybody off. We got to kind of Come in like that. Pull up on that meat and go around. Around this rib cage because it ain't nothing but bones up under there. There are a couple pin bones that'll be in this fillet. Pull it, pick those out. Same thing on the other side. 
like I said here, we'll show y'all. Look, watch this. So without cutting, you can see there's like a little zipper right here. That's what we call it. Right there by his spine. You can use it as a guide for your knife to get as close as you can to that bone. Save a lot of meat. Just like that. Get down and we'll cut along the bone. A nice sharp knife helps with this. We're using the seven inch sword flex fillet knife. Really nice knife. You don't need this expensive a knife, but it is. This is a very good one and I wanted to buy a nice knife this year finally after having Dexter knives pretty much the whole time I've been fishing. Alrighty. Go through. Cut through the tail. Then, so you got this spine right here. It kind of put, pokes up. What you do is just angle your knife down again. And just cut through. And then cut back. And again, just cut up over this rib cage because like I said you're not really missing anything when it comes to cutting through that One second. there we go That's how you do it. There ain't no meat left on that. As you can see, maybe a tiny bit right here where I didn't angle my knife back down. That's mainly how you get them. There ain't really nothing in here. We let other fish eat that. We throw this back in the water, let them eat on it. Crabs, everything will eat on that. All right, so one more time we'll show y'all. First on this one, we'll start with our little head cut. So you got this, that's your hard piece. You can see it's soft right here. So what we're gonna do, Cut like that, get that piece started. Then we're gonna find that zipper again. So, we'll come in with our knife. There it is. And just cut up with it. It's lovely having that zipper there because it kind of guides your knife. And just cut up. And then we come in, now that we've cut up, and got all that cut up, start cutting down. Get all that meat off the bone. So the way I, I'll best explain getting close to the bone is I kind of push down on the tip and angle just in slightly like this. You don't have to push a lot or hard, just enough, just like that. And then just do your sweeping motion. That way the knife Kind of glide. See how it's kind of gliding on my table like that. Do the same thing there. You can hear all those bones. That's what you want to hear. Then as you get back here, we always poke through right there and just cut down. And come out like that. Make sure we cut that headpiece so it's broken free. And then over here, kind of angle in to that. And then just do like that. And there we go. That's broke through all the way. Come back, just make sure we got all that. Yeah, we're good. Alrighty. Then we start to cut up over that rib cage. Not too hard at all, guys. Not too hard at all. A lot of people don't really like keeping these fish because they've heard they're bony. These fish aren't that bony. There's a couple pin bones right here that aren't hard at all to pull out with your little pliers or something. And even then, if you really wanted to, you could take your knife and just cut all that out. Because you can see there's really no meat on that fillet right there. I'll actually go ahead and show y'all how we cut the skin off real quick because I don't know how much daylight left we got. Don't ever start from the front. And so what we do, I like to get this near the edge of the table. And I'll just really get my hand right here 
really try and pinch that skin down and then from this point I've got a good bit of skin in my hand and something to kind of keep it from sliding back now I didn't cut the bloodline out of this so I'm going to try and stay just above that skin to leave a lot more of that bloodline on there but you're going to let your knife do all the work you're really just going to be pulling the fillet to you more than anything uh, you can see I left a little bit of that bloodline on there, and I didn't really do too good of a job, so I'll give y'all some more examples. Again, get it close to the table, that way you can keep that blade like that instead of like this. But, take it. And just, I like pulling the fillet more because it lets that blade do all the work. You can see we left a lot of that bloodline on there. Now we just have that little bit right there. It's just that simple. When I first started out, I always thought you had to come from this side and then quickly learned after going to a couple cookouts, that ain't how you fillet fish. I always come from the back when you're taking the skin off. Anyways, that's how you clean them. Let's get to cooking them. All right, guys, it is the next day, and we're going to dress these up just a tiny bit more. I didn't get the bones out of these when I first filleted them, and there's always going to be pen bones with fish, with sheep's head. You can cut them out of the fillet and just cut the meat out because there's not really a lot of meat where these pen bones are, but in areas like this, I like to just take my fishing pliers and pull them out just like that. They're not hard to come out at all. Just a little bit of time consuming making sure you get them all i do want to show y'all before we even put seasoning on this i always pour a little bit of olive oil and rub it over the fish to make sure that seasoning really gets in there good it just helps the seasoning bond to it a little bit better we don't pour a lot we just get a little bit and you can see i messed up and <laughs> still got a lot on them we're going to take our compass point blend black and blend and spread it over these fish and I'm gonna be pretty generous about how I do this flip and do the same thing to that other side Show you a little secret. I always take a tablespoon of butter and put it in my pan beforehand. Let that spread around for a second. This also lets me know when my pan's ready. But while the fish is cooking, this butter is soaking into it because fish is such an absorbing meat. And cook them. And we're going, what we're going to be looking for while these are cooking is you'll see, this one's already started a little bit because it's such a thin filet, but you'll see that white start to come up over the edge and you can actually see it through the meat and you'll tell that that side's done and then you can flip it. It'll be about somewhere between two to four minutes, sometimes maybe five for each side, of it, but they cook pretty quick if you have the heat going good. We have ours on like a medium, almost a little bit of medium high heat right here. Now you can see, see that white coming around there? This, this one could probably cook just a little bit longer, but this one's ready to flip. But we actually, we'll let this one cook for just a minute longer. Oh yeah, that's good. That looks good. One day I will have good fish flipping skills, but right now I do not. I'll go ahead and add another tablespoon of butter. 
because that is already drying out. I like putting it in the middle here so it really gets in here. These are good. Go ahead and get them off the skillet in here for now. This will also go in our oven just to stay heated for now. All right, guys. Now that we're done with all that, we're going to take all this out of our oven and get ready to eat. Here is one more step I want to show y'all. So you can. From this step on make the tacos i will show y'all what i do i take all of the fish meat put it in a bowl Come on. and we kind of shred it up so what i do is i'll either take the spatula and just like that All right, there we go. That's pretty good. So, that's how I like my meat for fish tacos. That way, it, it's kind of like you ground it up a little bit, but not really. But it just makes it easier to spread around on the taco and get everything you want on the taco, in my opinion. We'll load up our taco real quick. I'm actually going to try some sour cream on mine because I've never done that. I do it all the time with my regular beef tacos. Want some cheese? Not right now. I want to try it without cheese at first. Everything's better with cheese. That is not a true statement. <laughs> Let me get that folded up real quick so we have room. For our fries. There we go, guys. Simple plate. Looks really delicious. Ready to dive into this. Alright, let's go in for our first bite. Mmm. That is really good. That is awesome. All right, guys. That is going to do it for this video. I hope y'all enjoyed. As always, I leave these trip reports up on Salt Strong. So if you're an insider member, you can always go check those out there. If you like the video, leave a like. If you love content like this, you can always consider subscribing and comment on what you want to see next and i will see y'all next time peace